Okay, folks, thanks very much for joining us today. Um, I'm Gareth Lynn, I'm the Technical Director for Arm Sosta in EMEA, and today we're going to go through uh, continuous integration. We're going to talk about how we see this relating to um, the entire process and how we see testing tying into this process. Um, Sosta, as a company, has been about from 2008. Um, we really, at the advent of cloud computing, tapped into uh, cloud computing to, to really help us deliver um, a lot of performance tests, everything from very large scale through to, to small scale tests for all of our customers. We, we have a 100% growth year on year um, and we've been recognized by a lot of the top industry analysts and a lot of customer success stories so we, we know we're on a, on a pretty good track. Um, today we will talk about <coughs> a very brief overview from Sosta. Um, we'll talk about the need for continuous, so why we're using the continuous integration process. Um, we'll talk about the big three, and then we'll look at uh, continuous integration with mobile and performance testing. So Sosta customers um, don't compromise on their testing. A lot of testing in previous days gone by has been compromised based on size, based on pricing, based on time. Um, but social customers don't compromise. Quite simply, they've got the largest test platform behind them, which enables them to, um, to, to, to leverage the cloud and deliver very, very scalable, accurate performance testing. Um, since 2008, we have um, run over 10 million tests, and those are both functional and performance tests. Um, <clears throat> those tests themselves can be absolutely everything from small regression type tests in the lab, in a development environment, through to full, full scale production type tests where uh, you're testing maybe up to, to billions of users. These tests themselves um, uh, and real user monitoring have validated over 100 million, 100 billion user experiences. So this can be a full end to end process through the journey, it can be a very small piece of the process, it could be a simple story. Um, and in itself, that has enabled us to, to resolve uh, thousands and thousands of bugs and ensure the delivery of, of software applications into the wild. Um, <clears throat> we're going to talk about continuous integration and the speed of delivery. I'm sure you're all quite familiar with the basic concepts of CI um, and really what's not to like. It's driving through the performance testing or it's driving through the uh, development process. Uh, and resulting in a much more um, shortened life cycle, uh, a th more thoroughly tested application. If we look at some of the key components, small batch size is one of the key components uh, for continuous integration. Any unit of work that is large, the larger it gets, the more complexity you introduce into, into that particular cycle. With complexity, then you have more management type issues, everything from planning, designing, um, testing that process, uh, the larger it is, the more complex and the more tricky it's going to be. Comprehensive version control. With continuous integration, you want to be able to understand what's going on, what are you testing, what are the changes in this particular build. And you can achieve that with version control. So as you're moving through and you're moving into a test phase, you know exactly what has changed. You can revert back and, and pinpoint exactly what has changed in that particular build and you can achieve that via automated versioning control software. Um, <coughs> versioning control, we can talk about obviously at a code level, but version control also applies to, to your testing, to your test assets. It also applies to your environments as well, the configuration of your environments and what's uh, being deployed into those environments. Automation, a key uh, winner from a CI point of view, the ability to automate not just your testing, but the ability to automate the build process, to automate the configuration of your, of your test environment, um, to automate the, the results of your test cycle, and ultimately whether that's going to pass or fail your particular uh, build back into, into the CI framework. Continuous feedback, a key part. Of, uh, of CI, the ability to, when you release a build or you make a change, that you get feedback coming back as to whether that has passed testing, whether it's been successful, 
um, and your next steps that you can go through with that. And having that continuous feedback loop, and this is for everybody in the team, from a developer through to the project managers, to really be able to see very, very quickly and very, very easily um, that feedback loop. And there's three, uh, three key aspects uh, of the, the continuous feedback are that we, we build every change. So every single change that's going in, um, test every build and fix every failure. Okay, and if you go back to the first point with the small batch sizes, by maintaining small batch sizes, this makes it a very manageable, uh, very manageable process. Emphasis on the working build. Don't, if you have failures in a particular build, let it go through. Bugs that fester in the system become days, weeks, months old, are only going to get harder to fix as the process goes on. So make sure that you fix every build as you're going through. You don't let bugs cycle through into, into future releases. And consistent environments, a key aspect. Um, we'll talk a little bit later on about collaboration between teams um, across the entire cycle. And the consistency of an environment really aids and helps that process so that we know that the testing that is going on in the dev environment, the configuration is going to be the same in our, in our uh, integration, our staging environment, all the way through into the production environment. And using automation frameworks then, you can build out um, and run those uh, consistent environments. And collaboration, developer, tester, collaboration. So stepping away from developer does some small unit test, throws it over the wall to the tester, the tester runs tests and then reports back whether it's been successful or otherwise. Testers can be involved throughout this process. So testers work directly with the developers to ensure that they're building accurate, meaningful tests. Likewise, collaborating with the ops uh, team to make sure it gets um, accurately tested in production as well. And this collaboration between the teams across the, the phases of the project is a key aspect uh, for a successful CI project. So DevOps itself, um, <coughs> we, if we think of a, a particular industry, the aerospace industry, um, it's always had a, a very, very high degree of integration. The degree of integration that we haven't seen or we don't often see initially in the IT industry. When you're building airplanes, you want everybody to work together. You want to have an integrated project team to ensure that the quality is there from the outset. In the aerospace industry, if we have problems, it could result in death. In the software industry, if we have problems, it results in somebody getting a, a pager call in the middle of the night. So the, the drive through for an integrated product team has been a around for a long time. But more often than not, in IT, we see this sort of siloed approach um, within IT. And it's really about moving um, away from this approach into a more DevOps-led framework that applies across the life cycle of our, of our silos. If we look a little bit further at the silos, um, the silo on the left-hand side, development silo, um, you would agree that software design, coding, all sits in that side. On the right-hand side, in the ops silo, um, this is where the measurement and the user monitoring goes on. Um, and then in the middle, we have a bit of a, a murky environment where traditionally a lot of the testing has taken place. And in that centralized silo, um, there are other processes that go along, conveyor processes that are there to support um, the, the, uh, uh, the development life cycle. We call these the big three because they're the, pro the foundation for product development, speed and continuity. And when we talk about the big three, we're talking about change, release, and configuration management. And these are supporting processes. And these are processes that we can apply across all of the silos, across all of the phases. And as we see there at the green box at the bottom, the full life cycle, um, these can be applied throughout and across that, uh, across that phase. So if we focus on the, the middle silo, testing um, really has lived in there traditionally. But testing can be applied across everything. And a lot of organizations, probably within some of your organizations, testing does live um, in, in the development cycle. So there's testing done at that stage. And that can be simple unit testing from, from a development point of view. Um, probably a little bit less common is testing in production. So when users are in the 
uh, the far right hand side what sort of testing is going on at that particular stage. In development, we can do obviously unit testing, performance baseline. So we have a number of components that we know will have an expected level of throughput on the system. We can test at that level. It's not a full end-to-end -end user journey at this stage, but we can still establish a performance baseline. From a, uh, a database point of view, we can test on stored procedures. We can test on routines within the database. We can ensure that the, the number of, of connections established through to the database or indeed through to any component within the software lifecycle um, can stand up. When we're in the test environment or the staging environment, then we have the standard types of testing, our integration testing, stress testing, capacity testing. And these tests themselves can be, um, can be using a combination of um, of infrastructure that is internal to an organization and infrastructure that is using uh, cloud resources as well. And then all the way through to production level testing. And production level testing is, is often seen as a, as a bit of a no-no. People are, are scared of production level testing. They don't want to go to that level. They can't test in production because they think it's going to affect their customers. But we do. We do regularly and most of our customers Probably 75% of our customers will be doing some level of production type testing. And the advantages of production testing are, are very clear. This is your first step into the testing arena where you're testing from a, from a truly external point of view, where you're testing um, your, your external facing firewalls, your load balancers, any third parties that are, are in the system, you're testing all of that as well. So the testing throughout the process Taking it from the traditional central silo and spreading it across them all is a key aspect of, a, of continuous integration. Another aspect of testing, be it functional, be it performance, is making sure that the testing is realistic. We can see here in this simple picture, we have the design and the user experience. Two very, very different things. So the, the requirements have been put together People have tested to those requirements. And then what happens in, in real life is the users use it in a different way. And to really understand your user base, you have to be able to, to capture those metrics to understand how they're using it and apply it and feed it back into your CI cycle so that your testing is accurate and your testing is reflective. We have um, we've seen many customers who have gone through a lot of testing, different phases of testing. Um, they've They've tested a lot of their requirements. They've automated as many of those requirements as they can. And they've tested the wrong thing because the users have used the system in an entirely different way and it's caused them problems. So it's important to, to capture this information from your production level system and feed it directly back into, uh, into your, your CI cycle. To get that information, um, we have a product called Impulse, which is a real user monitoring solution. And Impulse gives you the ability to understand exactly how your users are, are using the system. It captures data uh, from 100% of your users 100% of the time. And within a matter of seconds, displays that data for you in a series of, of interactive dashboards that you can then help to, to digest and make business decisions on as to um, um, as to where you need to focus development efforts. This is a, um, this graphic here that we're showing here is from uh, Data Science Workbench, which is part of the solution, which gives you the ability to, to take the data itself and, and dig in to understand exactly what the, what the patterns of usage are. So what are the click-through paths to conversion? This is a retail site, obviously. Which click-through paths lead to the most revenue? What should your test coverage model be? and what are the true edge cases. So it's given you a very clear picture of exactly what you should be feeding back into that cycle. And it's not just in terms of the testing, it's in terms of the development effort as well. If we can see that a particular path through the application is more heavily used or is heavily used beyond what we expected it to be, and we also know the performance in that area is not great, then we can focus development effort in that particular space as well. So it's about using the real time information that you're getting from your customers um, and feeding it back into, into your cycle. The information that we gather here um, goes directly into CloudTest, which is a, a associated product, which is a performance testing solution. 
which then enables you to, to drive those, those performance tests. <coughs> so what else has been missing? To, to really, one of the aspects that we talked about at the start was automation. And that's not just automation um, of your deployments, your configurations, but also test automation. And mobile test automation is a relatively new field, but the ability to accurately test on real devices, real user journeys, exactly as, as your user community is using it, is, a, is an area that has often been missed within, within the CI cycle. Testing on the real devices, uh, you, you can see out there, test labs have a, a a uh, device lab that you can use to, to plug a, a range of devices in that you then run uh, your mobile functional testing on. Likewise, your performance testing can replicate real devices that are coming through. And this is giving you very, very realistic and a true representation um, of your test. Those devices can be within your environment. So you can be within your, your dev environment and your integration environment, entirely closed off uh, within your organization. Or they can be hosted in the cloud, and it can be a public or a private cloud as well. And that gives you a great deal of flexibility to, to change devices, swap out devices as, uh, as you need to as well. Performance testing. Often, performance testing is left to, to towards the end uh, in the staging environment, and the testing takes place at that stage. Performance testing doesn't have to be in that way. Performance testing can be at an API, database level, as I mentioned earlier. Whatever it may be, uh, performance testing can be part of, the, uh, part of the development cycle and carried through the whole way into, into production. And the key thing, again, to reiterate is that it's realistic. So you know what the users are like on your system. You know how people are interacting with your system. Um, your performance testing should be doing exactly the same. And solid integration. Integration across all of the platform, or sorry, all of the environments to ensure that the testing that goes pla takes place in the dev is the same as it is in staging, as it is in production. And making that process automated and seamless so that you've got complete control throughout. So CI, <coughs> why is CI critical? Why is continuous integration critical? User expectations are entirely different now. Um, mobile and web, proliferation of devices now, users, how they connect to your application or your website. Um, and these can be users that are internal to your organization. These can be users that are external. The cost of change is practically zero nowadays for people um, to move onto a to competitive site or a competitive offering. So you've got to treat all users the same and make sure that you're covering and catering for all the potential um, platforms that they can, they can connect on. Unprecedented scale. Performance testing years ago used to be measured maybe in the hundreds, maybe in the thousands. 10,000 user performance test 10 years ago would have been a really big and really expensive performance test to execute. But now, with social media, with marketing, driving, load, high traffic events such as Olympics, um, things that are promoted uh, via the media on a site, then the scale is a little bit of an unknown. It can be very, very high. We recently tested um, the, uh, the Baku games, and we tested to hundreds of thousands of concurrent users. But in reality, when the, the game site went live, they didn't get that level of traffic, but they weren't sure. And they needed to test that level to ensure that they had, they had mitigated the risk um, of testing that. The unprecedented scale can also come from lots of different locations. Um, a site can have different traffic algorithms in place based on where people are connecting from. So within the UK, if you connect to the BBC, you might be rooted um, based on where you're coming from or which ISP you're connecting to. Um, different geographies will send traffic to different CDNs. And all these things have to be tested and understood as part of your overall uh, performance test strategy to make sure that when the system does go live and you get that level of, of demand that it can cope with it. Complexity, complexity of apps has changed um, beyond all recognition. So go on simple client server, 
um, of database server. Now you can have lots of different inputs into your application, lots of different sources of data coming in that can modify the data. Um, lots of third parties, CDNs, etc., in there as well. So all of these components are important uh, to the process. And finally, rapid delivery. In this cycle where the demand, the cost of change is zero, the demand to deliver applications very, very quickly is very high. And you've got to make sure that those applications you're delivering stand up and have the right quality to, um, to deliver uh, the value to your business. So if we take a, a look at the a more traditional factory type approach, um, an assembly line approach. So the first stage they go through is the functional testing. Does it work as designed? Does it do what it's supposed to do? Then does it perform under extreme conditions? So we know it functionally does what it's supposed to do, but does the car drive down not a nice smooth road, but a potholed road? Um, what happens in actual conditions? When our real users get into that, into that vehicle, what are they doing? How are they using it? What's the impact of what they do on our design? And then approving uh, materials, approving improvements, and fitting back into that cycle. So again, part of a continuous cycle, and it's always been there. Um, it just may have taken a long time on a traditional type of assembly line. From a, a continuous quality point of view, very, very similar. Build the software, functionally validate the software, so functional testing, automated functional testing. Uh, and then performance, reliability, scalability tests to ensure that it can handle the extreme conditions. If you suddenly get a surge in traffic or everybody goes to one area of functionality that you didn't expect, what's going to happen to the application? What happens in actual conditions? You need to understand from a, a real user's point of view how they're behaving when they're using it and obviously unit testing the code. So the, the testing throughout the life cycle of the application um, feeding through your functional and your performance testing. And we talk about automation of testing as well. You're, you shouldn't aim to automate absolutely everything. You will try and um, automate as much as you possibly can, but you will aim to automate the simple cases. A lot of people will make the mistake when they're looking for automation cases, be it for functional or performance, that they're gonna pick the most complex cases. That shouldn't be the case. You should always try and automate the most simple cases cases that you can get through a lot of and you can get a lot of coverage on that then free up your resources, your engineers to focus on the more complex cases um, and build solutions for those. So from a social point of view, um, <coughs> a requirement change, and this can be, um, this can be a feature request, um, it can be a bug change, whatever it is, is fed in. And then Jenkins kicks off the, the uh, runs any unit tests as it normally would. This is then, um, we spin up suitable, consistent test environments in the cloud or in the test lab. A lot of our customers are doing um, uh, a lot of this type of testing with cloud-based resources because cloud-based resources are very easy to use, very easy to, um, to interact with. And they're very cost effective as well. You don't have to have um, maintained service 24 seven. But we have a good mix of customers using both. We then run iterative load tests via Jenkins. So the information directly from the load test is fed back into Jenkins so that we can see exactly what's going on, whether it's passed and failed, whether we've introduced regressions into the application, um, exactly what's been going on. If you've got mobile devices, then run functional testing on the actual mobile devices. Not on simulators, not on emulators, on the actual devices themselves. And again, these can be devices that are within your organization or they can be devices that are publicly hosted um, in a cloud. It's all about getting the truth, getting the information out about exactly what's happening as a result of that build that has been checked in. So have we introduced regressions? Have we fixed a particular bug if that was the case? Does the system still perform? And the feedback of information is direct into Jenkins. It's automated and direct into Jenkins so that you can see exactly what's been going on. And everybody in the team can collaborate and proceed with, um, with the development. 
establish performance baselines. A key thing with, with CI and with the cycles that you're going through is that you want to establish a performance baseline. You want to understand, okay, at this point in time, my application had this level of performance. You can then determine whether that level of performance is acceptable and that can become your baseline. And from that point on, you can then see as you go through, you add more complexity, more features to the application if you're introducing or, re or reducing uh, the performance of that application. And you can do that with a, an established baseline in there. And the final step, real user data. So how are your real users using the application? So the results that you got in your test lab of how the system performs, how is that reflected when the real user are on, their syst on your system? When somebody connects on a, um, an iOS device with a, an older version um, from Canada, what's the performance like for that user? And is it something that you need to consider and something that you need to be um, concerned with? The, this is a, a screenshot of the, the integration that we have um, between the Sosta products and Jenkins. And the integration is very, very straightforward in that um, you install it as a, as a, a normal add-on as you would. And it gives you the ability to um, call directly via Jenkins as part of a build step, um, your functional and your performance tests. And the information from those tests is then fed directly back into Jenkins and you can decide um, whether, it's going to, whether it's going to pass or fail the application. From a mobile testing point of view, there are additional steps that you can add, such as um, building the code, deploying it to a device, controlling the device itself, and these are iOS and Android devices, and again, then running tests on those particular devices. From a functional testing point of view, we instrument the application with a small library of code, and that part is also included in the build process. We can branch build from Cloud Test as well. So Cloud Test supports um, many different ways to put together and organize and structure your tests, but you can do it in a very modular way so that you can decide what tests are going to form um, the, the regression pack for particular branches as you're going through. So there's a lot of flexibility and capability in a very, very easy to use interface that enables you to, to accurately build out um, the type of test that you want. The test results themselves, um, you don't have to step into the cloud test or, te or touch test. You get all the information in fully interactive dashboards within your Jenkins environment. So we can, we can drill down into a specific set of results. Um, you can see exactly what was going on, what has passed, what has failed. Um, and then through into the regression pack itself, and you can not see it's not very clear on the screen, but at the bottom there, click here to see the the source to dashboards for this test. And that gives you the ability to, to see exactly what you would see if you were in the tool. And it's a single source of truth. It's a single point where everybody in the organization, be it developer, tester, PM, can look at the information and see exactly what was going on in that particular build um, and understand what happened. This is a view of one of the uh, dashboards uh, within Cloud Test, which is showing us each of the individual steps in this process all the way down to the error. And this is in the Jenkins environment so that you, um, you've got that information available to you there. <coughs> There's a pass test, and we can see that level of detail as well. What we can also do, which is important from a regression testing point of view, is you can plot and trend the information. So as you're going through um, and you're introducing uh, or you're running new sets of regressions on each of your builds, you can see what the impact of that is across the last 10, 20, whatever it may be, regression runs that you want to see. And it helps you over a period of time plot and understand um, exactly what's been going on. <coughs> and then we can, from the integration, then we can decide whether it's a release candidate or not. With your sets of tests that you go through, then you, you have the option to um, decide whether it's going to be moved forward as a release candidate as part of your automated process. From a social point of view, this is something that we do ourselves. We do a lot of this. So we've got three key products or three main products. 
two builds per day of each product, a day of in the customer branch, 8,000 tests executed per build. Those 8,000 tests are a combination of, of unit tests, functional tests, and some performance tests as well. So we're doing this all through the, the Jenkins interface. For mobile, which is the touch test product, over 300 fully automated tests for iOS and Android on a daily basis. So there's a, a, a lot of support within the, um, the SOST organization. We worked with uh, Jenkins themselves to, to build the application and the integration, and it's something that we rely on heavily in our, our own engineering department. So a <coughs> um, couple of takeaways. So understand your requirements. Um, understand your requirements, obviously, from dev all the way through to production and back again. Understand the requirements as your users are telling, the, telling you from uh, production monitoring. So you can see exactly how the system is being used, what you should test, and where you should, uh, you should focus your testing on. Identify the cloud advantages for you. So cloud computing offers a very, very scalable, very easy to use, and very cost-effective mechanism to, uh, to provide infrastructure, to provide environments, um, to provide servers for testing. So use it um, to your advantage. And it's not always going to be something that you can, that you can use, that you can utilize. It, um, it, may be, it may be something that you'll not actually be able to use based on your environment, based on your application. We have a number of customers um, who have very secure environments, very secure applications that, that simply can't use cloud computing. So um, use it where it's appropriate. Automate the obvious and the most critical. Don't necessarily pick those very, very complex processes that are going to be a resource drain to try and automate, that are going to be complex to maintain. Pick the business processes and the areas that you can, you can automate very quickly and very easily. And obviously, the most critical gives you the best coverage and reduces your risk substantially. Do this all as part of a continuous process, and that's a continuous process um, of the build, through your configuration, through the release, and obviously your testing as well. And aligning the teams with XML um, information. Getting that single source of truth back into your environment, into that continuous process where you can understand how it's gone. Has it been successful? Have we introduced bugs? Um, is this, a, is this a, a release candidate? So all of that information is available. It's no longer siloed between testers, ops, and, um, and your dev teams. On a couple of, from a business point of view, areas why CI is important. All of these cycles of testing and cycles of CI are really, from a business point of view, to drive revenue, to drive your brand, and to maintain competitive advantage. If you're putting applications out there that are falling short or slow or, or buggy, then you're going to lose your edge. The business is going to lose its edge. So from a business point of view, um, the cycle for new features and improved applications is key. And uh, from a social point of view, we say performance is everything. And that means that we, the performance is the one thing that can define the success or failure of your, of your business or your brand. Um, if we think of the situation where a, a site goes down, people lose traffic, people will simply go elsewhere. And they're unlikely to come back um, to another site from a, after a catastrophic failure. So it can be, it can be a very important aspect um, to protect from a business point of view. OK, so um, there's a couple of free downloads. You can see the, the URLs there. We have blogs where we talk about performance testing. We talk about uh, continuous integration, um, all available to you. All of our software products are available for free. They can all be integrated into Jenkins directly for free as well. So. Um, you can download the performance testing product is limited to 100 concurrent users, but it's not time limited, it's fully functional. Uh, the mobile um, functional testing product touch test is limited to one device, but it certainly gives you the ability to, uh, to play with the tools and see how they use. And then Pulse likewise, 
you can instrument your site and use Impulse 2 to collect real user metrics back um, and use our use our our SaaS portals as well. So, any questions? And anybody would like me to go over? Nobody. Okay, well, in the absence of questions, then um, I, I think we're done. Thank you very much, everybody, for your time.